third thing is called the quick ratio or the asset test ratio. The asset test ratio is you take the current assets minus the inventory divided by the liabilities because inventory is also considered as an asset. And a higher ratio indicates short term financial health is better because you're removing inventories out of the equation because inventories is what is also counted as an asset. But you know what inventories are. Inventories, if you run a business, like case of medical store, is what is sitting on the shelf. Yes, if it sells, it becomes money. But if it doesn't sell, it's sitting there on the shelf. And that is a value that can fluctuate. And you cannot really know till it actual sale happens. So that inventory is something not tangible. It can move around. And as an investor, you need to know without that, are we okay? Let's assume the inventory is written off. Let's say you have a medicine, like case of a medical store, and you have, it's all expires and everything has to be thrown away. Or, you know, Chennai floods happened, your inventory is gone, what happened? So that asset which is left divided by the liabilities, which you still have to pay, mind you, if you lose all your inventory, doesn't mean the company can forego its liabilities. The liabilities are still there. So if that ratio is high, that indicates even better health. So that's known as the quick ratio or the asset test ratio. That is also a good thing to keep an eye on. The fourth one is known as a return on equity. Okay, that is the amount of money which you've put into the company, which you've invested, and what is it coming back in terms of income? All right, that obviously should be a good number to know. And as a value investor, you should keep an eye on, which is the net income divided by shareholders' equity. That is the net income divided by the denominator of the shareholders' equity. This indicates how efficiently the company is running, how efficiently it's using the money you've invested to generate profits. Right. So if you look at it, the higher value is generally favorable. That means it's creating more money out of the money which you put in. That ratio, the higher it is the value, the better it is. Again, these numbers which I'm saying may sound quantitative, but remember it is qualitative because each value is interpreted by your quality, what you think is good quality. So the number which comes is quantitative. It's a fixed number. It's a 1 or a 2 or a 1.5 or a 0.5, whatever you want to say. But what you think that should be the value of that number is something very personal, right? So this is what sets you apart from Anand. Anand can calculate and give you a number. You can calculate and give the same number. But is that number good or not? What sets you apart from Anand right now is that. That understanding, looking at that number and saying, is that number good or not? It's like looking at somebody's BMI and saying if they should be losing weight or not. BMI is such a fluid thing. Those of you who know what BMI is. There are a lot of people who think BMI is waste. Some a lot of people think BMI is the gold standard. Some people feel the BMI should be here. Some feel it should be there. Or if you're working out zone 1, zone 2, zone 3 in a uh, aerobic workout, they'll say you should be in this zone. So the zone number is can be fixed. But which zone you should be, how long you should be, is it good for your heart or not, is something qualitative. So keep that in mind, these numbers. So return on equities is another thing which is Higher the value indicates favorable because the amount of money you're putting in, it's giving better profits. So that's another checkbox if it's good. The last one is called price to book ratio. Price to book ratio is a market price per share divided by the book value per share. The lower the PBI ratio indicates the stock is undervalued relative to the book value, which is also considered attractive to value investors. So this is the number we usually look at banks because in the bank, the market price of the share divided by the book value, the P by B ratio is because the entire company's earning is the book value. What does the bank do? It lends money and takes money as deposits. So the whole asset of the working of a bank, financial institution is just money. It's a book value. So that's why we look at PB for banks. For other companies, we look at price to earnings. So if this number is below one, it's considered to be undervalued and if it's above one it's above value now where does it, you draw the line for overvalue i do not know that is your personal choice and p by ratio is another metric which we look at like i said for financial institutions the very important metric but for other non-financial companies what we're talking about right now it is a metric you should also still look at but it is not like i said these are five things which are numbers then they're open to interpretation these five are the ones which i wanted to talk about other than the usual one, which we always talk about, which is earnings. We talk about price to earnings, which is PE. And Anand has spoken about PEs and Shashwat has spoken about PE and the importance of PE and why you should analyze PE. So now let's look at it hypothetically. Let's say there's a company which has 5 lakh in assets and has 2 lakhs in liabilities. And 
the equity and the total equity is around 3 lakhs and the non current liabilities which are not due in the first year is around 1 lakh and the current liabilities which are due within a year is at 1 lakh and the net income is around 50000 so when you punch these numbers out you'll get debt to equity ratio is a 0.67 current ratio is around 2.5 which is the current assets assumed divided by the current liabilities then the quick ratio mind taking with inventory and the roe is uh, around 16.67 right so if you look at these numbers these are just numbers and if you look at each one for this hypothetical company 6.7 indicates it's a good reasonable level of debt compared to the equity so this is in companies not very reliant on debt to finance its operations that is apparent and it's a positive sign as a value investor right the second one which we look at is a current ratio which is 2.5 and the quick ratio is around 2 both these liquidity ratios are well above one indicating the company is more than enough short term assets to cover its short term liabilities this is also good because the financial health and the ability to weather short term financial challenges without distress is also proven the third one is return on equity which is around 16.67 which is a strong indicator the company is able to generate profits from its equity a high return on equity suggests efficient management of the company and profitable operations which are attractive to value investors other than this then you have to look at the stock price so you can hypothetically put numbers and see but i just wanted to put some hypothetical examples out there for a make believe company to show you how you can look at this so how you should approach these five equations so remember investment is a long term game we are playing so whatever you're thinking of after doing this you should be ready to invest in the company and not buy the stock as a trade we're not suggesting on trades we're only suggesting on investment so any company you're looking at buying you should look at holding it for a period of at least 5 years if you do not want to hold this company for 5 years or more do not invest into the company after you do all your analytics and whatever money you're putting the stephen coffee money you're putting you should be ready to forego it for 5 years if you are not ready to forego it for 5 years do not invest that stephen coffee money nor invest into that company so those are the critical things i want you to keep in mind as you analyze these companies this is a video which i want to do for some time to tell you so i hope this hypothetical data which i have spoken about has given you some idea right so thanks for watching the video and i'll see you in the next one